Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrim and in today's video I want to take a little bit of time with the new rogue buffs to talk a little bit about some of the ways you can improve your damage as an outlaw for World of Warcraft PvP. Outlaw rogue spec is a very interesting spec. You would think it'd be a lot like a combat rogue, but I feel like the spec in Legion that replaces combat rogue is similar in terms of playstyle and ability names, but I feel like it's a bit far from the actual playstyle. If you played Combat Rogue in Warlords General, which is probably the only expansion I can remember Combat Rogue as being good, never played Wrath, so I can't even talk about that, then you would remember a very sustained, heavy, strong burst playstyle that was really good, but it was also somewhat simple and easy to play, and it is my favorite spec of Pandaria and Warlords General. But with the replacement of Combat Rogue into Outlaw Rogue, things are a little bit different. I held off this video for a long while, but with a recent buff to Rogues that is a 5% agility buff, now Outlaw Rogue is more of a competitor. Both Outlaw and Assassination got a 5% agility buff for PvP, so you should check out both specs to see if maybe there's something else you might enjoy besides Subtlety, which has proven itself to be one of the better specs as of recent. So I want to talk a little bit about Outlaw Rogue, and these aren't going to be the very basics either of Outlaw Rogue, I am still waiting for the next patch to come out to make a full blown guide on it, but while we are in the patch 7.1, about to transition to patch 7.1.5, I do want to give you guys some tips in order to help you increase your damage as an outlaw rogue and overall become more efficient whether you like doing battlegrounds, arenas or any sort of form of PvP. So let's talk a little bit about outlaw and how can you improve on your own DPS. I get questions about outlaw often and a lot of people asking me when should you burst, how am I dealing sustained damage, why do I have so much energy stored up, how am I always generating energy and how do am I able to line up burst on somebody and score a kill where most players pop all their cooldowns but targets still live past burst. So this video's point is to help as many of you guys pick up outlaw and maybe give you guys some things to practice on because one of the things let's say in sports you need to have good form in order to perform well in sports. If you have bad form then everything falls apart so I want to guys help you develop this outlaw rogue form so then you're able to carry on as an outlaw rogue in battlegrounds or arenas and uh, perform fairly well or as optimally as possible. Now this video does not always feature only my own sources, most of my sources come from watching players better than me. One of those players are PS Hero who uh, done a few games as outlaw and primarily watching Woodman and seeing what he does. I watch what these both players do which are uh, gladiator players, I try to learn and pick up their methods, absorb it and then try to deliver it as a message for all of you guys or as a video and try to break it down into very simple terms. So I'm going to talk about, first of all, with the uptime and the downtime of an Outlaw Rogue. If you played Warlord General Pandaria, then you'll remember Subtlety Rogues. Subtlety Rogues are probably the best example for this, mainly because they're the Rogue spec with a lot of downtime but also a lot of uptime when it comes to damage and abilities. Subtlety of Warlord General and Pandaria would primarily set up a Slice and Dice, you would set up a Rupture Bleed so the enemy takes more damage and you would pull energy and save up for your Shadow Dance and then you would line up Burst all together. So there was a bit of setup and a lot of downtime, but when you have your cooldowns available, then you have a lot of uptime, so then your damage kind of transitions in the lower end, upper end, lower end, upper end, and the upper damage is when you burst, so you burst or try to burst once every minute or so. And eventually in Warlords you would burst every 30 minutes, every 30 seconds because of Banish and uh, Shadow Dance being basically your cooldowns. So an Outlaw Rogue functions in a similar fashion. You have the downtime where you are rolling for better buffs and trying to build combo points, and then you have the uptime where you're popping your cooldowns, whether you're going with microaggression or flat out burst. So I want to talk a little bit about this. So let's first take a look at what helps you be get the low downtime. So during the downtime, you're running Sword Master so you can get more Saber Slash on the target. When you don't really have that many combo points and don't really have a lot to work with, having extra Saber Slashes means you're able to generate a lot more combo points. That means more buff rolls. So what you're trying to do is roll your bones as often as possible until you get the right buffs. And having Sword Master gives you a higher chance that your Saber Slash will hit a second time, allowing you a lot more combo point rolls, allowing you more pistol shots which are free, allowing you to conserve your energy for when you have two buffs, which is an indicative of when you can burst. So some of the buffs you're looking for are True Bearing or Shark Fist of Water. So those are the two buffs that you can start bursting. But in most cases, once you get any two buffs or three buffs, usually you can open up your burst as an Outlaw Rogue any moment afterwards. So during the downtime as an Outlaw, what you're trying to do is build up common points of the enemy. You're trying to pull your energy as best you can. You're kind of looking for the setup and you are rolling for buffs. That's, you're going to be doing a lot of buff rolls, so get used to it. 
and practice on training dummy just rolling for bones and rolling for buffs and kind of getting used to the downtime and the uptime. So chances are you will have a bad buff in most cases unless you come out of nowhere and you roll a decent buff. So you will have downtime so do establish that in your head. That is going to be happening but that is normal. And sometimes you'll get a terrible buff three times or four times in a row. There's not really you can do about it. That is just part of Outlaw is just the downtime. But the uptime kind of makes up for it in my opinion. So it's really up to you. But during the uptime, once you deliver yourself a good buff, like for example, I'm just going to build up combo points and roll for bones and nothing amazing, you're free to use Mark for Death, roll the bones by the way, to get a decent buff. Now you have true bearing. What you want to do is set up yourself five or six combo points is better, the more the merrier, because with six combo points you'll get between the eyes, what you'll do is stun your opponent and burst into them. And you will try to deliver as much damage during those six seconds worth of burst. If you have cooldown reduction buff, that's great because then you could follow up another stun on the enemy. And if you have Mark for Death, you're able to get a lot more run throughs into the target. So that's basically how you would burst as an Outlaw Rogue. You pop all your cooldowns on a stun, you can make swaps onto an enemy this way. And if you have cooldown reduction buff, then you're able to get your burst out a lot more often, especially using your adrenal rush. So we establish the fact that Outlaw has downtime when you're prepping for a buff and kind of just trying to build combo points. And then you have the uptime. Let's talk a little bit more about the downtime and how, it can, how you can help yourself transition from downtime to an uptime a lot easier. One of the best ways is energy pooling. So energy pooling is basically the idea that you are not going to spend any combo points as a rogue until you're fully capped. So you're trying to stay with as much energy as possible. There are a couple of advantages to that. So one of the things is there's no point of attacking an enemy during your downtime, for example, while you're rolling for different buffs. And I got two of the same buffs twice. Of course, that'd be my luck. But once you, while you, of course, I get good buffs now. While you're rolling for buffs, you, there's no point for you to spend a lot of your energy. There's no point to spam out your saber slashes completely until you're fully empty. Unless maybe you have buried treasure, which allows you to get a little bit more energy back. There's really no point. You're not going to be dealing that much damage to the opponent because most of your damage comes from your burst. So what I like to do is just let my energy pull, as I try to do it as best I can, let my energy pull until I generate combo points. Allow your Saber Slashes to proc and get those free pistol shots in there and try not to hit Saber Slash until you're full of energy. And if you have too much energy and too many combo points, just use a run through if you're not building for anything amazing. Out Rogues actually generate a lot of energy when they're on the enemy because of combat potency, which would normally read, but thanks to one of my relics on my weapon, your offhand attacks have a chance to generate 18 energy after you fully build up your weapon. So this allows you a lot more energy regeneration. So by pulling your energy, you are able to not really waste your energy, not really waste your combo points where it's not needed. Plus, if you, let's say you end up rolling an amazing buff together, right? I'm just pulling my energy, I'm continuing to pull my energy, I have now full combo points, pulled my energy, amazing buff rolls, I can stun and then go into spending my energy into my opponent once I have decent buffs. So I'm able to get as many saber slashes in there during a stun and the only way you're able to transition from low downtime to high uptime is when you're pulling your energy because let's say amazing buffs rolls, mark for death uh, between the eyes of the enemy because you have the buffs. Use tricks of trade for more damage, now you're able to set up a microaggression. Another one of the advantages of using energy pulling is you will never be energy starved. So let's say the enemies are swapping onto you, you'll always have faint available. There will be a slight uh, energy increase with faint in the next patch. It's going to go from 20 to 35 energy, so it basically will be an ability worth of energy. To be able to have enough energy for a faint at all times is crucial, especially when enemies are making swaps to you as a rogue. Or if you're playing BGs and you need more energy, or you need to sacrifice energy into defensives, you're able to pop faint and have yourself a little bit more steady. So, I mean, of course, as an outlaw rogue, you can spend a lot of your combo points and just uh, drain yourself completely. But I believe that in most cases for PvP, where you're trying to make calculated swaps and calculated bursts, I feel like it's better to keep your energy in the upside rather than on downtime. Mainly because you're able to transition from downtime to uptime a lot smoother and a lot easier. Now for setting up bursts, I want to talk a little bit about that. So we talked about the downtime of an outlaw rogue, right? We talked about the saber slashes and <laughs> energy pulling. I feel literally useless because I just have to melee attack my enemy because I have no energy. So what you're trying to do for the downtime is set up your burst. We already established that, but what do you do once you have a decent buff for burst? How do you set up your burst? You basically want to swap into an enemy with a stun and pop all your cooldowns. What I like to do is I made a macro that literally pops everything. Because I contemplated before in the past, uh, like, 
should I separate my cooldowns? Should I just go in Curse of the Jedi Blades by itself? Should I go Plunder Armor by itself? Should I do a General Rush by itself? And I thought, why don't combine them together? Because when you're trying to score a kill, you want all those buffs available. You want a General Rush so you always have the energy. Even though you have control as king as PvP talent, which gives you 3 seconds of a general rush during the stun, while it is helpful, you want the full, undeniable attention of a general rush to fuel you with energy at all times. So, I made a macro where I put plunder armor, crystal dread blades, and a general rush together. So I'm able to pop all of my cooldowns together on a single go, and I don't have to keep them on 3 different Q buttons like I do, so I have to hit to space, I have to hit 5, I have to hit middle mouse button, so it's 3 different keys that I'm having to press, or a combination of keys and it kind of messes up my burst altogether so it's best to have them on a one single macro so i have that right here and i'll try to put it in comments although sometimes uh, macros directly from comments onto uh wow don't translate is easily so i'll try to do my very best here guys anyway basically what you're trying to do is during downtime get a decent buff and then during the uptime try to build up five common points stun the enemy pop all your cooldowns and burst into them you also want to use tricks of trade together so thick as thieves is a PvP talent that allows you tricks of trade to increase your and friendly's da target damage by 15%. And basically, that's what it does. It gives you a small short of burst for 6 seconds. Which, what I like to generally do is make a macro, especially for arenas, to target party 1 or party 2. Because you're going to be in a party and you, chances are you're going to be doing 3s. In BGEs, I kind of just I kind of just hit uh, tricks of trade and click somebody. I know it's not the best way of going about it, but... In battlegrounds like random BGs, it's a little more lax, it's a little more chill, and for the most part, I can just prepare with the th uh, thickest thieves, just trick somebody, and then open up with a stun. I will have a little bit shorter over window for burst, but in random battlegrounds, it doesn't matter as much. But in arenas where it matters a lot more, you definitely want to have a macro. So what I've been running are cast, target equals party one, close bracket, tricks of trade, and also made one for party two mainly because I haven't never really played around with target mac or party macros in the past, so I'm playing around with them right now, so sometimes uh, my DPS ends up being a party too, so I don't want to be tricksing my Disc Priest for no reason, so I'd rather be tricksing the Death Knight. So what I like to do with uh, Thick of Thieves, what you're going to want to basically, since I have nobody in my party, you'll see it light up on the bottom, so it kind of will show you how I'm using my abilities all together. So first of all, again, you want to build up your buff during the downtime. And then what you want to do is take the downtime and convert it into uptime as you upscale everything with all of your burst. Alright, we got a decent buff. I like True Bearing. It's a great buff, allows me to basically burst a lot more often and allows me to go back to back stuns. So I have a decent buff. I'm transitioning from downtime to uptime. What I like to do to increase the potency and effectiveness of my Thickest Thieves for as long as possible during the 6 second duration is I like to use Thickest Thieves after I stun so that my melee or my first Saber Slash triggers Thickest Thieves so I get 6 seconds of damage. You can trigger Thickest Thieves first and then stun the enemy but then you'll have about 5 seconds worth of run through damage. So this is what I generally like to do. Full ready, stun the enemy with uh, tricks, mark for the uh, Saber Slash run through, Saber Slash run through, Saber Slash run through. I don't have enough energy, I say I pistol shot run through for free and then I use my mark for death if possible. Like You can even use a uh, Saber Slash uh, between the eyes since you are rolling the cooldown reduction buff. So you're able to kind of combo it together and stun lock your target twice back to back. So that's generally what I like to do. So Thick as Thieves is more like about finding a time to kind of slot it in. So you want to establish a stun first, then throw in Thick as Thieves. But in Battlegrounds you can put Thick as Thieves and then open up with a stun, then go through your burst. One of the advantages of using Thick as Thieves are micro bursts and I kind of want to cover it. So let's say you're playing against a Druid, for example. which uh, probably the best example you're doing the same thing you're normally doing you're building up for buffs and you have a restoration druid that you're fighting against he's sitting in bear all the time and you kind of want to catch him out of bear so i got two buffs and i can technically deal burst damage here you catch him out of bear let's say you're targeting this target and this is the bear and you know and the hunter the bear gets out of bear form starts casting heals you want to catch him you swap onto him stun him took thick as thieves it was tricks of trade for 15% damage increase. They see the damage coming in as you're spending all of that energy. They pop bark skin. You didn't really use any massive cooldowns. You just swapped onto them with a stun and used thick as thieves. 30 seconds later now, they won't have bark skin. So you can use the same combo, stun them, thick as thieves, pop all your massive major cooldowns, and then burst them down. So this is something you can use as thick as thieves because it is 15% extra energy. And if you're playing with someone like with a Disc Priest or a DPS class or a Holy Paladin who's rolling Melee Wings, you're able to combo the burst together. 
to enforce certain defensives, maybe even a trinket, out of enemies that defensives like, for example, uh, sacrifice for paladins or bark skin for druids, and then leave them alone for a bit. And the next time you swap onto them, they won't have it. So then they'll either have trinket or use some mass appeals or even bigger cooldowns in order to survive your burst. So as an outdoor rogue, this is something you can do as microaggression swaps. Now I want to talk a little bit about mobility of an outlaw rogue. And one of the cool things about outlaw is the grappling hook. It is one of the most interesting abilities in the game. And honestly, one of my favorite. But it's an interesting ability with a little bit of a drawback when it comes to high, I guess, high speed PvP. That's the best way I can put it. So in PvP, a lot of things are happening and you're just trying to focus on dealing damage on a single target. You're trying to minimize how many actions you should take in order to keep focus on your enemy, in order to keep focus on uh, the enemy's DPS and the second DPS and interrupts and everything. So you want to minimize as many frivolous things that you don't have to do. One of the coolest things of an outlaw rogue is the grappling hook because it has an insane range which allows you to try the chase or retreat very effectively on a 30 second cooldown. Probably one of the best abilities in the game and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they eventually just baked it as part of the spec because I don't know anybody who does not run Grappling Hook. Acrobatic Strikes is pretty gimmicky but can be fun in certain situations, but Grappling Hook is literally the best in terms of the uh, abilities. It's actually probably one of the best movement speed based or movement based abilities in my opinion. And in PvE it has some fun ways of getting around to higher ends, let's say, of a uh, almost got up to the top of the tent, but it gives you a little bit of verticality for, let's say, world PvP, but it's very useful in arena situations and BG situations. One of the things that you, does come with the ability is the reticle. So what you're given is a reticle, a lot like death and decay. So I have right here distract, and you see this green reticle pops up, so what you have to do is first, you have to keep buying the ability, and then you have to target, and then you have to left click. So that's three different actions. What I decided to do is instead convert it into one single action. Well, actually two. You point and click. Or I guess you press key binding. So what I did is I made a macro in order for me to be able to, in high, PV in high action PvP octane situations, to move around with grappling hook much easier. What I did is I made a macro that has been added in Legion out of the cursor macros, which are a lot like smart cast macros in League of Legends, where let's say you're targeting an area and if you hit an ability, it brings up that reticle, right? But if you hit that ability again, it'll just activate where the reticle is at, so you would just tap it twice. But here, you just point, hit it, and it will appear on your cursor. So it's a cast, bracket, at cursor, close bracket, open bracket, close bracket. I don't know if that needs to be there, but I would keep it there, just because in case the macro breaks, uh, grappling hook. And you can do this for any other ability, so if you want to be the kind of guy that has distract on that kind of uh, macro, a grappling hook, uh, death and decay if you're playing a demon hunter tank you can use that for demon hunter tanks uh, you can use that as priests for the absorb bubble you can use uh, death knights as amz there's a lot of things you can do with it really so if you're one of those classes that has something you put in down on the ground very effective for shamans as well like let's say if you want to drop down a totem somewhere it just takes out the middleman so you just point hit and it'll transition you so this allows me to have a little bit more control in terms of pvp right let's say i'm getting a this is a really, it's a really sketch situation. I'm just doing my thing. I'm in my downtime. I'm just building up combo points, everything, and I'm just trying to actually roll for a cooldown reduction buff. Yeah, there we go. Because I can actually reduce the cooldown of this ability. Things are getting out of hand. I'm looking to my right, nowhere to go. I'm looking to my left, there's nowhere to go. So then I decide I'm just gonna go up in a tent. Now I escape, and it was just that much quicker for you to be able to get a response out of the ability. So definitely you should incorporate this macro into yourself. I'm not sure if, I'm pretty sure a lot of you will be able to use this for mobility, but I think this is also a DPS increase in a way, because you're having to spend less time, mark, click, all that jazz. Now I want to talk a little bit about some of the useful talents in different situations, and I have a couple of different situations where rogues actually go change their talents. Your class talents for the most part stay the same. Here you go Swordmaster, Grappler, Hook, Deeper Strat, Illusionist, Dirty Shrix, Alak, or Demark for Death, and they change based on the meta. So, right now, this is what we're running in the next patch. We might be running something a little bit different, but for the most part, they don't change. The PvP talents do change, though. For regular Battlegrounds, this is the build that I usually run. And if you're somebody who does regular BGs, Gladius Medallion is kind of, you need it, uh, in my opinion. Reinforce summer and sparring, I guess it depends up to you. If you feel like you get trained by melee really hard, sparring is a better option. But if you feel like melee don't really affect you that much, reinforced armor ends up giving you a little bit extra healing from Grimson Vile. Gives you a little bit more health so you can basically stand up against anything. 
uh, caster or melee, and personally, a really good option in general. Maneuverability so that we use Sprint, uh, which does have a cooldown reduction with your true bearing buff for Roll the Bones. Allows you to use it in order to get to a target and BGs where a bunch of slows are getting thrown around. This is kind of nice, so you're a slow free. Then we have Tricks of uh, Thick as Thieves, so you should be playing where the team is at in BGs. I mean, you can't go solo, and I guess if you're going solo, maybe Honor Among Thieves, but the Thickest Thieves, 15% damage increase is so nice, it's almost necessary for Outlaw. Definitely don't, I wouldn't grab Turn the Tables, because you never know if you will actually be able to live out a stun, or if you're gonna trinket a stun just so you can get Turn the Tables, I feel like it's just a little dicey, so I like to have control. Next one, Control is King, <laughs> no brainer because it's honestly the best one in the uh, slot. Anybody who is stunning or polymorphing or silencing around you will give you free adrenal rush, so MBG is especially helpful. And the last one, I mean you can play around with Dismantle and just like CC everybody and be a trickster rogue if you want them. I like Plunder Armor mainly for the burst, so like let's say a flag carrier is running flag, blind the priest, burst the flag carrier and then we're out because out the rogue's damage shines especially during the burst. So lining up all the bursts and getting the good buff and using Plunder Armor is just so nice, it, uh, very effective. Drops enemies held by 10% and uh, very effective to help the team. Pretty short cooldown too of 2 minutes. Now when you're playing against paladins in arenas, for the most part I like to go cut to the chase, that's really about it, I don't really change much. I like going cut to the chase against paladins because when they use their uh, their movement speed with horse, whether it's a holy pally or red pally, it gives the same movement speed, so it's really hard for holy paladins, uh, let's say you're chasing after a holy pally and trying to kill them, it's hard for them to get away from you. And if a retribution paladin is trying to kill for his healer, and a red gives himself movement speed, you are able to get movement speed, so you kind of play enough of the movement speed of the enemy. And uh, that's for the most part, that's all the differences I make. Against feral rogues, cut to the chase is a must, because if a rogue is running cut to the chase, which they should be, then both of you have movement speed increase. Against a rogue, it gives you movement speed increase, but also gives the rogue movement speed increase, so it's a question of who's the better rogue. And I like to take this one mainly because I feel like I can outmatch another rogue, unless they're majorly better than I am, or marginally better than I am, and it kind of depends on the spec. If it's assassination and you're running with a paladin, like, you can't really do much to be honest. This allows you to stay on the healer and get away from rogue and get too into rogue's face whenever you need to. This basically disables all slows and it's kind of fun watching everybody just, all two rogues just running around like madmen. This is also effective against ferals because ferals have a uh, movement speed increase compared to what you have. So basically a feral being around you allows you to get cut to the chase. So if a feral is trying to get rip on you, you are able to kite him and have him chase you a little bit. So a feral gives you mobility and feral basically enables you to kite them a little bit. So you know, sometimes people are able to take that advantage to delay like a rip or delay some kind of like massive burst when Tiger's Lust goes out. So you don't want to take any kind of that damage. So in some cases you're able to use cut to the chase to that extent. I guess most casters that have a slow, I like to go maneuverability. I, for the most part, casters don't really offer you cut to the chase, so you can't even benefit off of it. But maneuverability allows you sprint. So let's say you're going against a mage with a plethora of slows and roots, uh, and it gets very, very annoying after a while. Uh, you are able to use maneuverability during certain key moments. Let's say like while you're bursting and then the mage blinks, you're able to use sprint ahead of time to try to root you. Root doesn't happen, you're able to stay on them, so you're able to rotate grapple hook sprint, then grapple hook later if you have cooldown reduction. So this helps you out a ton. Uh, works really well, mainly because of the cooldown reduction, and it just ends up being a better talent. But for the most part, rogues don't really change their talents that much. The Thickest Thieves, Controller's King, and Plunder Armor end up being the best talents that you would roll in terms of arenas. And there's some room for maybe Cheap Tricks, Dismantle. Uh, I thought Drinking Up Me Hardies would have been a very interesting one, but if Outer Rogues dealt more sustained damage in Battlegrounds, then I think Drink Up Me Hardies would be an interesting one because you could give a healing potion or a healing tonic tonic to anybody who doesn't have any self heal so like a warrior friend or something while you'll be out there dealing sustained damage but control is king because of all the uh, stuns going out in the bg allows you a lot more adrenaline rush so this allows you a lot more damage in general and i think this is everything i have to cover this is some of the more entry level slash a little more advanced type of um information i could provide you guys in terms of an outlaw rogue. so hopefully this video was able to be Helpful to you guys when trying to figure out how to play Outlaw. This isn't the best guide in my own opinion, mainly because I feel like I don't really know how much more detailed I could have made it. But what you need to do with this information is you won't be able to just soak it in, watch the video and say, all right, I can do BGs. 
then you're gonna enter BTs and think that, oh, okay, I watched the video, now I can do top damage. No, what you have to do is you have to practice all these methods. You have to practice energy pull. You have to practice the uptime, downtime. You are gonna have to make mistakes, but when you make mistakes, try to learn from them. As Out the Rogue is a specific type of a rogue spec that's not too foreign. If you played Subtle Two Rogues in the past, then you might find this a little bit familiar, except with a different rotation. You no longer are you backstabbing, but instead you're using Saber Slash. It's almost like a combat rogue. So it's like a mix of both playstyles. But anyway guys, this is it I have for you right now in terms of helping you out to play Out the Rogue. And with the recent 5% agility buff, hopefully some of you will give Out the Rogue a try. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about the video in the comments below. And if you want me to do this type of in detail videos for any of the other two specs, Subtlety and Assassination, I can definitely do this for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see all of you in the next one. Also be sure to check out some of my recent videos because I'm going to start using the YouTube, uh, what is it, outro, enable, annotations thing. So if you guys could probably give them a like, just let me know if they work, that'd be great. But anyway, thank you guys. I really do appreciate it. I got to go put a bunch of videos together and tomorrow I'm going to finish up my citizenship stuff. So I'll be a fully fledged citizen ready to vote for the next election. I was able, I was, I was able to miss this one by just a hair, but... You know that Hillary Trump election? I wanted, so wanted to be part of that. Exciting stuff. Anyway, thank you guys. Appreciate it.